Hi everyone, I'm so excited to kick off this year's demo with Dementicare, an app built with Flutter and Firebase that's equipped with a wide range of features to complement caregiving for people living with dementia. Let's welcome the creators Aishik and Ritik from Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. Dementia is a widespread disease with over 17 billion hours spent for caring patients in the US alone. What's worse is more than half the carers face substantial emotional, financial, and physical difficulties. Dementicare is a mobile app to complement caregiving for dementia patients. Here, we see the caregiver dashboard with access to emergency contacts, sending urgent notices to any patient using keyboard or microphone input, tracking the live location of any patient using Flutter Maps. We also provide productivity features such as calendars, reminders, and notes for improved efficiency and accessibility. The news section provides all local and international news for dementia. The discussion forum, powered by Reddit, gives access to a large community of carers and patients. The chat room provides a community of caregivers to interact and network with for problem solving. Our health chatbot, which can make appointments for patients, retrieve information on diseases, conduct symptom checking and triaging by using powerful machine learning and natural language processing. and the Profile tab with access to comprehensive real-time information of patients and adding and removal of patients. Now we move to the Patient Dashboard. There is the SOS functionality which can trigger a call as well as send an SMS to the patient's caregiver directly from the app, even where a crash or fall is detected in the background. Play games to help exercise the brain. Family reminiscing with quick access to family members and calling directly from the app. The Memories section serves as a scrapbook for the patient to record and store important memories. Notices section displays all urgent notices sent by the caregiver. We have already started collaborating with organizations such as ADA Singapore, Allium Healthcare and Jamia Nursing Home to enable living through caregiving. Thank you. Hi, Team Dementicare. Hi, Florina. It's good to be here with all of you. Hi. 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 I'm good to be here. Awesome. Great. Well, Florina, I'd love it if you could introduce yourself. And I know that you have a couple questions for the team. Yes. So, my name is Florina Montanescu. I'm an Android Developer Relations Engineer. So, uh, first of all, Team Dementicare, I really, really liked your project. Uh, I think it's such an important topic. And actually, there was one specific thing I liked. Uh, when I checked out the UI, I saw that the, the carers and the patient section in the app are, are quite different. And I like that you paid a specific attention to the UX of the app. So, thank you for that. And now, I have a few questions for you. So, the first one is... What was the feature that was most difficult to implement? Thank you for that, Florina. Uh, the most challenging feature for us to implement would be the different views for the patient and the caregiver, and also maintaining the flow of information from a single application. We basically had to strike a balance to keep the app immersive and simplistic for the patient so that we don't confuse them. But at the same time, we had to have it feature rich for the carers to provide the perfect services for them. To give an example, during the early stages of our development, we had made the application in a way that the data flow had to be triggered manually by the patient. This meant that they had to click specific buttons on to send their location and device data and so on. But when organizations and testers tried our application, we realized this would only confuse the patient. Based on this, we re redesigned the entire UI of our app making it full of visual clues for the patient and automating, uh, automating patient monitoring features into the background. At the same time, we also reconfigured our cloud, which is hosted on Firebase, to ensure scalability for our users. This allowed, for example, a single patient to have multiple carers, which is quite common for family-based carers, or we help shift, shift based carers to register and care for multiple patients. In fact, almost 100% of our testers actively said that this was making their experience much better. So this kind of a flow of information across the patient and the carer while ensuring differentiated views for them was definitely the toughest challenge for us. Well, thank you for the answer. And I really like the fact that you actually listened to the users, that you integrated their feedback in the app. I think that's such a crucial part of building a product. Uh, I have one more question. 
So um, I remember specifically the SOS functionality. Can you tell me a bit about how it was implemented? Like what technology did you use? And what were the things you had in mind when building this feature? Um, hi, Florina. Uh, maybe I can answer this question. So the SOS functionality on the patient side of the application is uh, a simple yet an essential part of it. So on the front end, we have a large SOS button, which when clicked by the patient will actually trigger a call to the SOS contact. But actually it was also quite important to factor in the cases where the phone or the patient might fall, making it quite difficult to manually click this button. So in such a case, uh, by using the inbuilt inertial measurement unit of the phone, we actually detect the crashes and falls in real time. And this helps trigger a call to the SOS contact of the patient upon such a detection. Oh, I, I see, that's covered... a good idea. Yeah, Sorry. indeed. <laughs> so to also actually cover cases where the SOS contact is unreachable via phone call, we configured the SOS to send an SMS to them at the same time. And this helped highlight the need for attention from their end. And to explain more about the technical aspects of this feature, so when deciding the libraries to implement the call and the crash detection features, we had to take into account several factors like the efficiency of the package as the SOS had to be triggered in real time, then like the reliability and the uptime, which we gauged based on the popularity and user reviews, and finally like support for sending an SMS as well. So after research, we decided to use the telephony package uh, to trigger a call to the SOS contact since it is quite widely used and was recommended by the community for its efficiency and like ease of implementation as well. And it also had support for sending an SMS without opening a dedicated application for the same. And on the other hand, for the crash and fall detection, we use the Shake event plugin, which was again recommended for its ease of use and near real-time detection capabilities. Hope that answers the question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the answers. Awesome. Thanks so much for sharing. And we do want to bring in the audience questions. Um, while we're pulling up that question, I do want to remind folks to please go to slido.com and you see the, the, um, the code at the bottom there, GDSC21. Ask any questions you have for this team and all the teams that are coming up today. Um, so we'll pull up a question for your team, Dementi Care. And that question is, where do you see DementiCare going in the future? What are some of the, the next steps and what does the future look like for DementiCare? Um, sure, uh, thanks for the question. Uh, maybe I can first like go ahead with this. So for the future steps of uh, DementiCare, uh, both Eshik and I have thought about and classified into two parts, basically the business development and the technical development. Uh, so, as we already mentioned, we had already started collaboration with many organizations like Alzheimer's Disease Association in Singapore, uh, Allium Healthcare, and Jamia Nursing Home. And our plan for the future is to basically reach out to even more organizations for the professional caregiving services part of our application. However, we had also made the application with the intention to help the non-professional caregivers who might not be associated with any organization. So we also plan to make Dementic Care available to non-professional caregivers like the family members, et cetera. So we plan to begin outreach to such members of the public as well. Uh, thank you, Ritik, for the business development part. Maybe I can explain more about what we plan to do technically. So as Ritik mentioned, we want to keep improving the applications. We believe in continuous improvement. So we want to add more features and refine the existing features based on market feedback. So some of the things which we plan to do is actually collaborate with organizations to adhere to PDPA guidelines and privacy guidelines because they are pretty stringent in the healthcare sector and we want to keep it as, as usable while uh, as privacy preserving as possible. And another thing which we want to do is actually develop tools for migration and integration of demand care into organizational workflows. So this might include integration with the existing databases or softwares which uh, organizations or people might already have or some other tools which we can develop for the same. Uh, yeah, I think th that's our future plan for now. That sounds great. That's really exciting. And it's great that you already started reaching out to organizations. So great work. And I used to live in Singapore, so I do miss it. It's nice to, to see you all are based there. I hope everything is going well there. 
Um, but thank you all so much for joining us. And thank you, Florina. It was really great to get to know your project. And thanks so much for uh, being a part of the Solution Challenge. Yep, it's pretty awesome here. So thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Bye. Bye.